This is Edward V coming back at you from Bolt Life Proof Grooming and today we're going to talk about another interesting topic when it comes to fitness and that is five walking fat loss tips. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. Number one, ensuring that you have your glycogen depleted before going into your walk. Now the reason for this is because studies have shown that it takes about 30 minutes to deplete your glycogen through physical activity. So that means if you recently consume food, if you recently consume carbohydrates, you're going to carry some glycogen on you. And if it takes 30 minutes and then you do a 30 minute walk, you've depleted glycogen, but you haven't really tackled the body fat. Two things you can do is either be in a fasted state already where you haven't eaten for a few hours, or instead of doing your walk, you can do resistance training first, like lifting weights or calisthenics, push-ups, pull-ups, whatever it is, because those movements will activate glycogen storage for energy and subsequently deplete it, allowing you to go into your 30-minute walk unrestricted by glycogen buildup. And you get a lot of bang for your buck on your walk. Number two, doing 30 minute walks, nothing less, but also nothing more. Studies have shown that people who have done more than 30 minutes of walking have actually reduced their adherence to it, which means that when they continue to walk more than 30 minutes, later down the line, they tend to just stop walking altogether because they become incredibly disinterested in the constant walking. You want to do exactly 30 minutes. 30 minutes gives you enough so they can get a good cardio workout with a decent amount of fat loss and a continuous post-exercise energy burn, but it's not so long that you just become completely disinterested in it so quickly. Number three, you want to walk at a brisk pace or above. You want to get as much as you can, and if you walk at a brisk pace or above or you walk somewhat faster than normal walking, you can go much further for the same amount of time, giving you an ability to burn more calories for the same time frame that you would have had if you would have walked very slowly. Just put a little pep in your step and it'll take you a long way in your fitness journey. Number four, weighted walking. Putting on some sort of weighted material. Because what happens is that as you continue to walk and you successfully continue to walk, your weight will drop. But as your weight drops, so does your metabolism. Because it automatically happens. It's a thing called adaptive thermogenesis. Your body is adapting to the energy output that you now have. And also your weight has reduced so your body doesn't have to carry the same amount of weight Thus it does not have to burn the same amount of energy to move your body around But how about you take that away from your body and you add the weights that you've lost if you've lost five pounds Carry five pounds in your hands or ankle weights or chest weights Whatever it is if you lost ten pounds put a vest on that could add ten more pounds This will definitely help continue to combat adaptive thermogenesis as your metabolism reduces from the weight loss. And number five, try your best to walk on soft surfaces. It will actually help you do two things, go a little bit further and be a little bit safer. Even though walking has a negligible injury risk of just 2%, you actually reduce that 2% even further when you walk on soft surfaces. So if you can find a track near you or just grassy area, go ahead and try to walk on those surfaces. It'll be more comfortable for you and keep you walking longer. I'll see you guys in the next one.